I'm sorry. But I don't want to be a, an emperor. That's not my business. I don't want to rule or conquer anyone. I should like to help everyone if possible. Jew, Gentile, black man, white. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another. In this world, there's room for everyone, and the good earth is rich and can provide for everyone. The way of life can be free and beautiful, but we have lost the way. Greed has poisoned men's souls, has barricaded the world with hate, has goose-stepped us into misery and bloodshed. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It is always good to be on here with you guys trying to edify the people and just seeing what is going on in our world. It has been a little while, so I'm very, very excited. Let me just see if my brother is on here. Father, I'm sure. Can you hear me? There, one second. Let's see here. 708. 708 This is following you sure? No, this is not. Okay, sorry. Okay, got the wrong one. Don't worry. Get back to you. One second. All right, all right. Now, this is the Israelite Prepper, and what we're going to do is we are going to talk about, you know, the prepared mind, give my uh, brother a little time to get on the phone. Been a little while. It's exciting to be back here with you guys. Always awesome to be on talking about, you know, prepping and the Hebrew Israelite way and, you know, coming out of her, my people, and just really getting into it and changing our minds. So today's episode is really about the prepared mind basically some prepping one-on-one in the first year in prepping, the first year in prepping. So I'm going to hold down the show until my brother can get in, maybe some technical difficulties and stuff like that. But I want to get into some things that um, he is uh, experiencing the phase that he is in. I mean, he's doing some big things out uh, on his land and his property. I just wanted to kind of uh, pick his brain on a few things that he is doing out there. But in the meantime, we're going to talk about a few things. Talk about some prepping one on one and and get and, and get some things out of the way to get us going in this whole in this whole new direction, you know, of living. And the reason why I'm going to start with uh, a prepared mind is because first and foremost, you got to have a, a a prepper's mindset. Okay, you got to have a prepper's mindset, and it's important to develop that mindset right now because it is too late to build the ark when it's already starting. Terrain. Okay, now, is it about being paranoid and running around scaring people? All right, no, not at all, not even close. It is not about that. It's really just having, um, it's really a lifestyle. That's really what it comes down to. It's not about waiting for something to happen, it's not even about predicting when something uh, happens. Oh, that is to say, it's not about predicting, it's about preparing. And that's exactly the mindset that you and I need to have, you know, going forward. 
Now, I know a lot of people, right right off the rip, let me just say, I know a lot of people say, man, oh, I should have started 20 years ago and stuff like that. Well, you know, we don't have that, okay? We can't cry over spilled milk. We don't have that kind of time. Um, but you have now. You're breathing right now. Um, there hasn't, you know, there's no collapse right now. So you have the present. I don't know how much time you have because, again, like I said, it's not about predicting. It's about preparing. And so we want to, you know, jump in on a couple of things we need to uh, look at. So first, your mindset, okay? It's not, it, you can't go in thinking, okay, well, I'm just going to go ahead. I mean, um, well, let me just do this because I think I only got three months before something bad happens, okay? Actually, we don't know. So it's real dangerous for us to uh, try to um, predict. It's real dangerous. You can be wrong. Um, obviously, you know, have the prepping community uh, or the um, community living, I should say, because they're they're pretty much when you're going to be self-sufficient, you're pretty much a prepper when you're self-sufficient. It, you know, it already has some, some negative stigma here and there, you know. Unfairly, I, I might say, and the reason I say unfairly is because we don't say that, you know, uh, the Mormons are weird or, you know, or crazy or anything like that. They're different. They're different. You know, they do their thing. They're different. But I think they're some interesting people. I think they're pretty self-sufficient. And, you know, they try to adhere to the old ways. So I, I just don't see a problem with uh, keeping that particular mindset right there. So they have a particular mindset. It's a particular lifestyle. That's why I say it really starts with that mindset. So what you want to do is you want to uh, examine why do I want to prep. That's, that's really why you, you have to do it, okay? And there's going to be more than one reason that you want to prep as well. It's going to be more than one reason. So the first thing you need to do is prior, prioritize. Now, people have many, many, many reasons as to why they want to prep. They have a ton of reasons. They have a lot of reasons as to why they want to prep. Um, it could be some people think that there's going to be a societal breakdown, okay? And, you know, the bottom line is when society breaks down, so do people. So if that was going to happen – um, you definitely want to be prepared for that. So if you're of the mindset that, hey, you know what, the society is going to break down, um, whether it's through, you know, an economic collapse of some sort. Some people believe in, you know, solar flares or anything like that and causing EMPs and, and, and just, um, you know, all of our communications just shut down, and that will cause, you know, mass riots and panic and things like that. But I'm not here to talk about, scary things or to scare someone into prepping. If you don't think it's necessary, obviously uh, you wouldn't be listening to the show. You wouldn't be tuning in. So it's definitely uh, something to think about. You know, do you believe that there could be a societal breakdown? Some people uh, prep because of natural disasters where it could be earthquakes or hurricanes or wildfires, mudslides. It, it could be anything. It could be anything. And people say, hey, you know what, I want to be prepared for that. So whether it's some uh, active nature like a solar flare or earthquake or something like that, some people just want to do that. Um, I was looking at a couple of articles that was really driving home that point. And so you definitely want to um, check out as many articles as you can dealing with the su subject. A couple of things, after something like that would happen, like uh, these natural disasters and whatnot, people begin to break down. Let me ask you a question. What do you think the government will do if there is chaos and panic and mass hysteria in the area and all over the country? You see, the president would have no option but to declare martial law. Why? To restore order. So you have to decide where do you want to be should such an event happen happen. You want to be in the city? You want to be in the country? You want to be, where, I mean, where, where do you want to be? And how do you want to live? And let's ask ourselves another question. How would society look if there was indeed a breakdown? How would it look if indeed there was a breakdown? How will people act? How will they act? And so those are some things that we have to ask ourselves, okay? What happens if, um, I don't know, 
the 18 wheelers are not going up to Walmart and putting food back on the shelf and in freezers. What happens? What happens if the doors are locked and the gates come down over the pharmacy? And people can't get their medication. So now you got people who can't get their medication. You can't. You got people who can't get diapers and formula for their babies. You got people who are on meds can't get a hold of their meds. What will society look like? See, these are the type of questions we have to ask ourselves. We have to ask ourselves those types of questions. So, with that on the table. You have to decide, am I going to prep? Is is prepping something that I want to do? Do you have a prepared mind? So start with prioritizing. Prioritize what you are going to do. Prioritize, prioritize, prioritize. And then you ask yourself, okay, what am I going to do first? So it's about those priorities there, okay? So it's going to be more than one reason. More than one reason for you to prepare. Well, I, I can't tell you what your reason is going to be. You have your own personal reason, but you 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 decide. You decide how you're going to do it. Okay. Now, a lot of people are moving out. Uh, you know, moving out of the city. You know, uh, they're following. You know, the Bible come out of her, my people, or be ye separate. Uh, things like that. And so they say, you know what? I'm just going to get my own land. Give me a couple of acres here and there. Uh, I want to grow my own food and things like that. So, but that's getting a little ahead of ourselves. Let's start from where you are. You may be in an apartment somewhere, in a house. Uh, You may, you know, you may be in the city, you may be in the suburbs, okay? So, some people have to decide, are they going to bug in, they're going to bug out. Are they going to stay where they are, are they going to move out, okay? So, there's a lot of things that we have to get with that. So, I'm just going to talk about few things you need on your preppers list, okay? Now, the first consideration I would say would be water. We have to think about water, and as they say in the pepper community, water is life, okay? So you have to look at your water storage first and your water filtration. You need water, and then you need filtration for that water. So you want to look at Five gallon, uh, if you're talking about in your, uh, you know, in your home, five gallon. Just look at your storage situation. You want some five gallon, so it's easier uh, and more space efficient to store at least five gallon jugs of water as opposed to a case of individual bottles. So I will probably stay away from individual bottles. You know, there are plenty of relatively inexpensive options at your local big box stores, or you can go online. You know, to, to either way, and just search for five gallon water storage. And you'll have plenty to choose from. Now, for those of you that have more space, 50-gallon barrels are ideal because I don't have to. I don't have the storage space right now, you know, to inc- and to incorporate, you know, two 50-gallon barrels. But what you could do is you can have those, and you can put that on the side of your house, attached to the gutters, and now you got rainwater. Of course, it'll have to be treated, but you got something there um, for you in a shaky situation, okay? So you got, you know, you got 250-gallon barrels, it rains, you catch the water, boom, easily you got 100 gallons of water to help you. So you definitely want to do that. On the inside, you want to put some 5-gallon, you know, it's just it's just more economical and space-saving for you. So water, that is the, I mean, water is light, okay? So you want to get those things. And look at particular uh, containers, you know, you don't want your water to be, um, you know, contaminate or anything, sun exposure, so on, so on and so forth. You know, you don't want uh, uh, microscopic organisms, or parasites, or anything like that to get in your water. So you want good, clean water storage and plenty of it. You can't have too much water, okay? Um, have that in there. Then you want to look at uh, food storage. You want to look at those type of things. And there's many, 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 many items that you can have. Uh, and you want to look at some of the um, – Staples, you want to look at some of the uh, food prep staples that are out there. So let's see, I was actually, I had a list pulled up for you guys because I actually want you to see some of the staples there, and they're really good stuff, okay? See, some of the staples, you want to look at flour, salt, 
Okay, if you keep salt, you know, uh, you keep it. If you store it right, I mean, that stuff will last forever. Okay, so you want to look at um, flour, salt, sugar, honey. You know, honey, that stuff will last forever. You you definitely want to store honey. Okay, spices, very spices of uh, various spices because you uh, want your food. I mean, you may be limited to the types of food that you'll have in a you know in a tight situation. But you, if you have the right spices, you know, hey, you can really add some flavor to your food. So you definitely want to look at that. Um, store yeast. If you can do that, store some yeast. You want to store some baking soda, baking powder, okay, powder milk. Yuck, I know. But when you can't go to the store, you don't have a, a goat or a cow handy, hey, powder milk is going to be the next best thing. And then also uh, vinegar, okay. All these things are going to help make your um, food taste better. Okay, so we're talking about some prepping one on one. Right for right from where you are. Okay, flour, salt, sugar, honey, various spices and herbs, yeast, baking soda, baking powder, powdered milk, vinegar. You want to look at all those things that's going to help you. Okay, uh, just you know help you help this food taste a little bit better in a sticky situation. Um, Right off the rip, you want to make sure that you have at least 30 days food storage just right off the rip, and then you want to build it month by month. You want to have 30 days. Then you want to have uh, 60 days. You want to have 90 and so on and so on and so forth, and keep going, keep going, keep going, okay? You got some long-term uh, food storage. You know, you want canned vegetables. A lot of those last a long time or canned fruit. Some canned meats, you know, like chicken and tuna. Uh, you know, obviously, this is, this is like prepper, so we're not going to talk about spam. Um, so we're not going to do that, but you know, you got the chicken, you got the tuna, that's, hey, that's something. So you want to start uh, with that. These are long-term food items. They last a really long time. Um, you want um, wheat. If you can get some hard red winter wheat, get your hands on that, hey, you, 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 you go a long way. Rice, rice and beans, okay? You got to get the Caribbean way, rice and peas. Get that going. Get that stored. Um, look at some of those things. Uh, then you also want to get acquainted with some Mylar bags, okay? You want to seal them in some Mylar bags. Look at those. It's going to uh, – for the sunlight, for temperature, for all these you, – you're going to be well on your way to um, getting your food preps ready to go, okay? So we talk about your water storage. We're talking about your long-term food storage. Um, get yourself some food savers, you know, um, jar sealers. Uh, you, you need tool, you're going to need tools for the trade. You're going to need tools for the trade. Other long term will be some freeze dry food. You know, will be the last item to stock up on. You know, unless you have an abundance of money and, and, and zero time, you want to get some free, uh, freeze dry foods. You know, the benefits with these are super long shelf life and virtually zero work. So even um, with the added cost, you know, you can instantly, boom, boom, hydrate it, you can eat. You know, they're a really smart choice you know, if you don't have anything else, okay? And I talked about canning jars and pressure cannon, uh, canners, water bath, the canning pot, all these things you can find. Go find a great deal on it um, and, and, and really get your food preps going just because we never know. Like I said, we're not into predicting. We're into preparing. So that's what we want to do. Um, some of the other things you want to do is some personal and some home defense. Okay, um, I I I know me and my family. I was actually at a um, a gun range, a gun range. Me and my family, we were looking at some of the classes that they offer, um, dealing with all types of guns: handguns, rifles, automatic, semi-automatics, um, shotguns, so on and so forth. And 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 starting from a one-on-one class all the way up to advanced tactical use. Okay, so you want to know what you are doing so you don't panic in that situation, okay, um, because if you, and I know some people may be uh, a little nervous, they may be like, well, you know, I don't want a gun, I don't want to hurt anyone or whatever, but look, if you don't protect yourself and you don't have something for your own personal defense, something that you can defend yourself, your life, and your family, and your possessions, if you don't have anything, just like they say of the IRS, other people who are in desperate situations they will, they got what it takes to take what you got, 
It's just that simple. If they have weapons, you don't, they win. It's that simple. So you want to be prepared to protect your preparations. And that's the key to that. So you want to know, hey, we can't pick and choose when uh, the bad bad guys are going to come beating at the door. You don't know. So you want to do that, okay? So get yourself ready to go with uh, some training, some self-defense, some handgun, shotgun, rifle. Prepare your entire family. Get them going so that you can help one another, okay, uh, in your family. Because we're talking about home defense, starting where you are. Um, obviously, I don't recommend that, uh, uh, being in an apartment, but if that's, that's, that's all you can go right now, afford right now, then you do what you have to do, prepare, and um, take care of what you have to take care of. Okay, so I'm just talking about protection, okay? Um, if you are in a place that uh, would allow it, then, of course, you know, you want sandbags, you know, uh, protection from, like, water and bullets and things like that. You want sandbags. That's going to help you. Um, I don't know where you are, if you're in a home or something, barbed wire, campfire, uh, you know, camouflage clothing, anything that's going to help you, uh, soft or hard panel, body armor, anything that's going to help you uh, in protecting your home and your family, okay? Um, Heavy-duty knives, okay? You want a holster for your pistols. You want flashlights, Okay. Um, firearm, a safe for your firearm. You don't want your firearms running around all willy-nilly. And, of course, you want uh, cleaning supplies, you know, gun oil, cleaning solvent, you know, spare brushes, things like that, you know, to keep all that going. You know, you want to um, protect all that and keep your weapons and your protection in tip-top shape. Let's look at a few more of the things. Uh, let's see here. A couple other things you definitely want to do. You know, you may want to have a little cash on hand. Obviously, if there's a financial collapse, the cash won't do you any good. So that leads me to precious metals. Investigate this for yourself, but I find the arguments and historical track record against fiat currency and the current rumblings of government wanting to take care of your investments for you very compelling. So I, you really need to look into some of that. You know, gold is easier to transport with the high cost uh, to wait, but you might have problem cashing a gold coin for, you know, a tank of gas. It's just the the, the ratio. I mean, gold, the value is going to be so high. So even one coin, looking at about, you know, what, $1,200 or or better, $1,200 or better right now. So you don't want to do that, which leads me to silver, okay? You might want to get into silver, so do that because the increments are a little bit, you know, better around 20 bucks a coin or something like that. So that's going to serve you a little bit better. So you want gold and silver. You want precious metal because some people say, oh, well, you know, you can't eat gold, you can't eat silver or whatever, but you can't eat paper dollars either. So you definitely want to have precious metal. Obviously, you want to have uh, a universal transfer of wealth, a universal currency, meaning gold and silver, that translates in any language, no matter who you are, no matter where you are. Gold and silver, people know what that is. It holds its value. Look at the history of it, and you go from there. You also want to pay off your debts, okay? Um, You don't want to be indebted to anyone so someone can hold that over you in a really, really tough situation. Oh, well, you got this $10,000 credit card bill, so we're going to fill in the blank. Um, You don't want to be indebted to anyone. You know, um, I personally uh, have some debt, you know, not a huge amount in my estimation, but – it's an amount I don't want, okay? So you definitely want to uh, get rid of that, uh, get that taken care of so that you can, you know, be in pe- be at peace at least with that. So get your bills paid off. You don't want the bill collector chasing you down, stuff like that. And then, you know, in a desperate situation, you just you just don't know. You don't, you, you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. Uh, it's unpredictable, but you know if you want to get some resources on that, look at some look at some of the history of some economic collapses. Okay, what well, a couple of years ago we had Greece. Um, you can go to other places. You go back even earlier, a few decades. You look at Germany's breakdown. You look at the American history at the stock market crash in twenty nine. Um, but look, read books, grab resources with that, and look and see how people responded and reacted. Learn what wheelbarrow. What does that mean? Wheelbarrow money, I should say. What 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 was that all about? So you, you, you definitely want to have an idea of that. And it's just being prepared. That's all it's about. It's just being prepared. But guess what? If you prepare, 
and nothing ever happens in your lifetime, that's good. You don't prepare because you actually want it to happen necessarily. You're preparing in case it does happen, you can survive. And some people who are well prepared will thrive. Now, you want some appropriate clothing, you know, uh, because it depends on the the climate and the environment you're in. It could be in a very, very hot environment, so you want to be prepared for very, very hot and dry weather. You might be in a very um, um, wet, you know, or humid environment, so you want to be prepared there. Get the appropriate clothing to be outdoors if necessary. If necessary, you don't want to have to do it, but you want to if necessary. Okay, you may, you know, you may find yourself outdoors, so you want to get yourself a dugout bag, have some camping gear. Um, and again, we're talking about one on one. What if you're, um, you know, you're in an apartment in the city or whatever, and you're thinking about getting out? Um, go camping every once in a while. See how that feels. Go, just go camping. Uh, learn how to start a fire. Uh, you know, get some fire starters or something like that. Learn how to cook on an open flame. Um, learn how to build a shelter, uh, get you, get yourself a tent. There's a lot of things that get some camping gear, you know, get yourself a basic setup and then build from there. Go to your uh, local uh, outdoor store or something, or if you can find someone that, that's a little bit more reasonable, go there. Go and check that out. Look into some of those things. Um, get some sturdy work boots. You want some, I mean, the environment out there is unforgiving. So get yourself some boots, strong boots. Get yourself some work gloves, some good, powerful work, because you never know. Outdoors can be pretty, pretty treacherous, and you want to be prepared. Get yourself some uh, good, sturdy socks, okay? Get some of those. You know, you, you may be in a cold environment, but you want to be able to protect your feet as much as possible. There's so, so many different things that you and I will need in order to survive. Now, again, like I said, you may be in your home, but you may find – uh, yourself outside, you know, roof roof cave in or something. Look at people in, you know, Hurricane Alley or something. Their home, the roof will blow off or something. You just never know. So, just, like I said, it depends on your reason for preparing and how you're going to prepare. Look at your geographical area and see um, what's it going to take for you to survive. Like I said, there's different climates and different topography that you need to consider as you prepare, okay? And then you might need to prepare some uh, – some materials, okay? You want some spare wood if you need to. Get some of that. A lot of chopped wood. I see people out, you know, in rural areas or whatever, they got plenty of wood because they want to make fire, fire to cook, fire to warm themselves. They need fire, okay? So they want to do that. So get yourself some spare wood. Can't have too much of that. Get yourself some tarps. They come in super-duper handy. You know, some plastic sheeting, you know, good for blacking out light or making – um, infection barrier, you know, you want to look at those type of things. Duct tape, nails, okay. I said you want your camping gear, so get your tent. Your, your tent It's a temporary situation, you know, temp- camping tents and tarps. Again, this is for good temporary situations. Get some bivy bags. There's another one that's great for emergency self, uh, for emergency shelters, but, you know, I'm not suggesting that for extended use, but you definitely want to do um something in the area of some temporary shelter because you never know what type of situation you may end up in, okay? So now let's deal with some uh, heating sources because we were talking about firewood and things like that, okay? You want to look at some heating sources. How about some kerosene heaters or some wood-burning stoves, okay, or some propane heaters? Look at some of those things. Go down to these local hardware stores. Some people say, you know, stay away from places like Harbor Freight, you know, uh, cheap tools and this and that, but guess what? Certain things you can get there, get from a place like that, and you'll be okay. Certain things, um, maybe not everything, but certain things you can definitely get from there. And I've been there; you can definitely get some um, good deals from there. So, but look into it. Look, look into some of these things. You know, we want a fire extinguisher, um, but see what see what you can do. See what you can find. Look at some of those things. Okay, look at kerosene heaters, propane heaters, wood burning stove. I was just, just looking at a um, single single burner uh, stove, very, very cheap, you know, less than 20 bucks or something, but something to get you by, okay? That thing would be like a godsend if you find yourself in that situation, and all of a sudden you look up, you go, oh, hey, look, I got this stove here. So 
definitely look into those type of things, okay? One of the other things that people miss when they're when we're talking about um, bugging out, bugging in, prepping, surviving, so on and so forth, is they miss it on hygiene and first aid. And what happens is that when we when we neglect that, you get infections, you get disease, and people die. You know, you get dysentery or something, and people actually die from diseases rather than a bullet or rather than a knife or rather than starvation. So you have to, you know, at least give some consideration to hygiene and first aid. Hygiene and first aid. Okay. Now there's a lot of hygiene aid, uh, hygiene items, but you know it's not necessarily a major focus or worry, but it's definitely something that you have got to consider. It's got to be there. Okay. So a couple of things you may want to do: grab you some shampoo and learn how to make shampoo. Store up and stock up a lot of soap and learn how to make soap. Get your hands on plenty of toothpaste and learn how to make. Toothpaste. I, I, you guys see where I'm coming from. Get hair combs and brushes. Okay, get that going. Uh, some clippers and some razors. Okay, grab yourself some floss. It's dirt cheap. A lot of these things are dirt cheap. And don't forget about going down to your local dollar store, or 99 cent store, or something, because a lot of this stuff is cheap. I mean, you can get bottles and bottles and bottles of alcohol and peroxide. And uh, there, there's so many things there. Um, it's like a little gold mine if you want to get that little hand sanitizer, okay, uh, fish antibiotics, okay. Uh, in a grid-down situation, a healthy supply of these, you know, could save your life, okay. So you may want to look at some of these things. You want razors. You want all these little things that's going to ha- uh, help you in a situation. You're in a dry um, environment, stock up on a bunch of chapstick. You know, this stuff go a long way. You know, you want your Vaseline in cold situations too. Um, I was looking at some commentary on, uh, I guess, the NFL Network. I'm a big football fan. And one of the things that um, a Hall of Fame player, he was talking about playing up in colder climates like Green Bay, stuff like that, is that they used to rub Vaseline on their arms because it was so cold. They used to rub it on their arms and their legs and stuff. Then they put on their socks and everything because the Vaseline closes up their pores and now heat is not escaping from their body. So store up on a whole lot of Vaseline. You're in a hot climate, store up a whole lot on sunscreen. Okay. It just depends on where you're from. Get your aloe. Store up on some aloe, okay? Uh, The ladies are going to need some feminine products. Store up on these things, okay? It doesn't matter where you are, okay? You're in the city, the suburbs, or way out in the boonies. You need some of these things. Store up on them, and if you can get them really, really cheap, just get them every chance you get. Get yourself some calamine lotion and some Benadryl. You're going to be out in a rough situation. What about allergies, okay? Sometimes enemy may be right on your skin or within your body, and you need to be able to survive and function, survive and function so you need to be able to um, combat that, okay? Get, your, get yourself some children's uh, fever reducer. If you got uh, some kids with you, some, some, some aspirin, anacin, or something like that, and you will be ready to go. So you definitely want to look at that. What I want to do real quick is take a quick, 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 really quick break, and I'm going to come right back, and I'm going to hit you with some more stuff. So be right back. This is the Israelite Prepper talking about the prepared mind, Prepping 101, and the first year. Stick with me. We'll be right back. So 
Continue, my brother, following up. Sure, are you there? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you loud and clear, man. Good to have you back. Let me let me tell you what we uh, covered so far, and then I'll bring you right in. Um, before you do that, um, let's catch up with what you've been doing, man. It's been a little while since you and I got on the um, got on the phone, did a little show. I mean, I know you've been doing. A couple of things. I uh, want you to share some of that with the audience, and uh, you know I've been in transition. But what's been going on before I bring you right uh, into the topic? What we're talking about? What, what you been up to? Ooh, brother. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you know, me and you have talked, but for those that are um, um, listening in, I purchased ten acres of property in the Ozarks and have slowly been building the property up. Um, Planting the gardens in. Uh, I mean, when we first got here, there was nothing but trees and and leaves and bushes. So, you know, spent a mm-hmm. large portion of our time, you know, clearing it. Mm-hmm. Um, and now, uh, finally, I am actually building a 12 by 24 cabin that is actually expandable, mm-hmm. so I can expand to it as you know the need arises, the family grows. You love it. Absolutely. So that's where you are right now. You're working on the cabin. Yes, sir. 
you know what, that ties, you know, that ties into our topic. Um, what I was talking about, you know, is prepping 101, and, you know, because I think that's phase one, whether you're, you know, in the city or in the suburbs or way out in the boondocks, um, we, you know, we really got to get into, uh, first and foremost, the mindset, okay? Why, why yes. do you want to prep? Why do you want to prep? Why do you want to, you know, maybe live set apart? Because people have their different reasons. And a couple things that I covered, brother, was um, – <clears throat> First, the mindset, and I said the different reasons. Um, if we've been, you know, if we've been kind of keeping our finger on the pulse of what's been going on, you know, in the world, in particular, our nation, you know, some people say, hey, there could be an economic collapse, but not everyone believes yeah. that. Okay, so that's yeah. fine. So one, one of it, one of them could be, you know, an economic collapse. Some people, if you look at, for instance, shows like Doomsday Prepper or something. Um, they they think it'll be like uh, a solar flare or something like that causing an EMP that's going to knock out power everywhere. And then, you know, there'll be mass hysteria. We lose our communications and things like that. Um, So, you know, people have their reasons. And that's fine. I'm not going to knock anybody for their reason. They, you know, whatever reason, whatever motivates you to move your feet, then, hey, that's you. Do do whatever you want. So I was talking about, you know, the mindset or having a prepared mind because I think it all begins in thought. You know, what's what's prompting you to do it? Um, what's leading you to that? You know, is it fear? You know, is it the spirit? You know, uh, is it the most high leading you to that and say, hey, look, I need to, you know, prepare? And what um, what I was uh, talking to the audience about is that, you know, if you're going to do it, you need to do it because it is yes. too late to build an ark once it starts raining. Yes. So, um, so you have you. You know what? You're in the next phase. I'm still in that first phase because I'm not actually on my property. Even though, like you, I I, I did purchase some property, um, but I'm not on it. And you are there. Your boots on the ground. You're at your property actually uh, putting the work in. So, I wanted you to take the audience to your. I mean, actually, you probably uh, had a prepared mind. Um, um, you know, for more than a year. But give, but but take them through year one, up into the point where you bought the property and moved out there. Okay, so you want me to kind of just bring them from the beginning to that point? Say again. Oh, I said. So you want me to take them from the beginning up to that point? Yeah, from the beginning up to that. Point. Yes. Okay. Okay. Am I coming in clear? Actually, your mic is doing uh, great. I'm just going to grab a quick glass of water because my throat got a little dry. But you go ahead. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, um, what kind of got me started in the idea with the idea of prepping? You know, my mother was somebody who, you know, had always been prepared for an earthquake living on the West Coast. So we have our, you know, our earthquake kit, you know, our 48-hour kit or 72-hour kit, you know, food, water storage some first aid in case of emergency, you know, having some clothing off to the side, you know, clean pair of underwear. <laughs> she was always big about that clean pair of underwear thing. Um, you know, so as I grew up and got older, you know, we'd always grown gardens. We'd always kind of lived that sort of lifestyle. But as I got older and, you know, it, you'd have to be blind to not really see what is happening um, on the earth today. You know, the, the different changes and, you know, the mindset that we've come under, which is, you know, nothing bad is going to happen to us because we're in America. You know, nothing bad happens in America. You know, these first world nations, they'll never be a third world nation. Well, as we're seeing, as we're starting to witness the shift that is taking place, we are witnessing the degradation of society, the degradation of ethics and morals, and, you know, the fall of man, you know, the dollars weakening, you know, there's certain things that regardless of whether you want to admit it or not, you can see it happening. You can see sin is, is at an all time high. You can see the dollars losing its value. You can see, you know, these inner cities are turning into literal war zones. You can see people are going crazy. They're going mad. You know, um, you, you can watch the news, you know, when we see some of these articles about, you know, like the EBT gets shut off and people are literally rioting, you know, over you know, about their food stamp cart food stamp card getting shut off, you know, they're rioting Talk over, about. we have the Section 8 thing now, you know, um, and, you know, people are, are literally losing their mind because, you know, when it comes down to people have, a, people have become so dependent on the government 
on mass media and on the government to give them their information, their food, their shelter, their everything. And to me, it seems like it's a ploy. Like they got everybody hooked on the system in one way or another. And at any point in time, they can pull the cord and say, all right, the game's over. At that point in time, you know, whether you believed in prepping or not, you're in that situation where you don't have food, you don't have uh, protection, you don't have any means of barter or trade, you have no skill, you have nothing except, you know, some mouths that need to get fed. And, you know, for women, you know, during that time, you know, the oldest, you know, profession will become the newest profession again, which would be prostitution, selling their body. And for men, they're going to become ultraviolet, you know, to their families. You know, I I watch YouTube videos and some of these men are like, you know, I'm going to go and I'm going to rob and steal and kill to get what I need. And people say, well, that will never happen. But just look at today. You know, people are killing each other over shoes. They're killing each other over a bad look on their face or, you know, you disrespect me by looking at me. What's going to happen when there's no food? People are, you know, look at the, the Black Friday videos, every single, you know, with the world's Christmas. Every single year, you watch people getting beaten up, shot over getting a television $100 off. Great example. What's going to happen? Great example. What's, <laughs> what's going to happen when society ceases to exist the way we have grown accustomed to living it? Well, people say that would not happen. Well, I'm sure that people in Venezuela thought the same thing right now. I'm sure yep. that those that are in, in Europe right now who are, who are going through the terror storm right now, you know, people can only take so much before they break, before they oh, yeah. literally emotionally and mentally break. And we become so sheltered to think that it, it couldn't happen. We really believe that it could not happen to us. Yeah, we're stuck in a particular. Yeah, we're stuck in a particular uh, paradigm. And you're right. They, the way it always has been, we think that that's how it always will be. And when you come and bring new information, it causes a type of cognitive dissonance where they don't they, they they resist it. They're like, no, no way. That that that'll never happen. There there's no way. Hey, you know this is. America, you know, that, that yes. sort of thing. So they can't imagine. They can't imagine that, which is kind of ironic to me because in 1929 when we had our stock market crash, I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> couldn't imagine it then. But it yes. happened anyway. You know? But go, yes. uh, go ahead, brother. I mean, you're, you're making excellent points, brother. Go ahead. And, and you're right about 1929. You know, look at the Weimar Republic. I guarantee you they never thought that their dollar would be, you know, their, their, uh, their currency would be to a point where it would take literal bundles to buy a loaf of bread. You know, you can look at the Zimbabwe note right now. I mean, you can buy a, you know, trillion-dollar Zimbabwe note for, like, $8 or something like that. So, you know, the fiat currency that we have, it's just paper. And that's, you know, the only people that get – the only reason it's worth anything is because we use it for trade. It's not backed by anything. It's not backed by gold and silver anymore. It's backed by absolutely nothing. And so the people that that create and print this thing on a thin air – Eventually, at some point in time, they can pull the cord on it, and they can say, all right, every man for himself. And we've gotten ours. We're safe. We're covered. Now it's every man for himself. And people say yep. that couldn't happen. That couldn't happen. No, that could never happen. And the, 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 the reality of it is is we're watching these signs take place right now. Yep. We are literally watching these signs happen right now, but people will close their eyes to it. And that's what literally got me into prepping. It was because I see so many people close their eyes to what could possibly happen, and then what happens when it does happen. Like for for instance, yeah, we we came out here, and I have a, a years worth of food storage for me and my family. But when we first got out here, getting acclimated to the climate, getting acclimated to you know the environment, working hard, you know, we didn't have you know uh, refrigeration. But when you have beans and rice. And, you know, other salts and, and lentils, and you can eat. So we actually ate the first month here on our, on our food storage. And so we were perfectly fine we, in making this transit. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Praise Yah for real. Praise Yah for that, man. So we had that food storage put away so that we could eat 
And it then it, it brought a you know even for 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 Sister T, my wife, it brought a level of like oh, because you know one of the hardest things is getting the woman on board with prepping. You know you hear men talk about it all the time how to get your wife on, how to get your wife in in, in the press, and it's like you you have to you have to show it to her. It's not really something you're not gonna buy. <laughs> you're not gonna convince her that you need to buy that next AK forty seven when you already got three more. You know, and, and, or that, you know, that next, you know, they, they looked at it like, okay, you already have one gun. Why do you need another one? The, the children need shoes yeah. and you want to buy another gun. But when she was able to live the, you know, the, 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 the buying or the, the eating of the food that we had stored, suddenly now it's like, oh, I'm starting to get this now. Like, it, it makes sense. And I don't think that, you know, we as preppers, I don't think that we present the idea of prepping in a way that our wives actually understand it because a lot you know you look yeah. at today you look at today a lot of men when they prep they, they they make it a fantasy you know i hear men like i can't wait for the economic collapse i'm like are you kidding me <laughs> it's just like it. some some dream you have of running around playing rambo and 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 you know you play too many call of duty games you play you know you've lived in fantasy land too long because <laughs> those of us <laughs> Because uh, too much call it, too much Call of Duty, man. Too much. <laughs> it is. It, oh my God, that was beautiful, man. Because you, I, I'm sorry, I I had to jump in there, man. Because that that was beautiful. What you said, shots fired, shots fired. Bro. <laughs> because you're, you know, because what's interesting is that when they get, <laughs> they don't understand. Now, and the reason I'm gonna bring this up is because you've been doing it. Okay, since you've been out there, is that they don't understand how much endurance it takes to get the job done. So running around, you know, playing, uh, you know, Call of Duty, you know, actually running around, having to do stuff, that that takes some endurance. You got to have some stamina, and I don't think a lot of people kind of get that. You know, they think, oh well, you know, I'll get get myself a couple of guns, a couple of rifles, and stuff like that. But when you're trying to, you know, protect your perimeter and you're trying to yeah. Um, do the things that you're doing. Preparing your garden. Guess what? Stamina. Trying to build yes. your cabin. Guess what? Stamina. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I mean, yes. I think people underestimate endurance. They do, brother. They do. You know, the whole prepping this environment. You know, I, I, I talked to a person. They were like, "Yeah, I use Call of Duty as training for the crap hitting the fan." I'm like, "What? Hey, when you die in these video games, you hit respawn and you start over again." When you get shot in real life, it doesn't take 12 shots to kill you, and you can't hide behind a wall and let your health, your health recover. This is real life. And if you, know, you get shot, do you know how to, tr- to treat a, a, a wound, a gunshot? Do you know how to, get, how, to, how to treat a stomach wound if you get shot? If you don't, you're dead. If you get hit anywhere, anywhere in that portion of your, of your – your, if, if you puncture a lung, hit your spleen, hit your, your intestine, you're going to bleed out. It's not a game, and yeah. I, I think that's what's happening with the prepping movement. And, you know, Donald Trump obviously is president. A lot of people said, "Oh, we we don't have to prep anymore. We're good. He's gonna change the world. You know, he's he's coming into America. Yeah. He's saving everybody. We're all good." And I'm like, people, this okay. is you know, this is the reason why we should be prepping. It's because absolutely, when, you know, when I the way I look at it is, whenever there's that calm, that perceived calm, what does the saying say? The, the storm is coming. The storm is coming, and we see already, you know, with the liberals and the the, the, the you know the, the politicking that's going on, and you know the the antifas and the people, you know, arguing and fighting in the street. It's coming to a head. All of this is coming to a head. You know, um, absolutely. And if if people can't see it, you know, Noah was, you know, Noah preached, Noah screamed, Noah yelled, Noah tried to get the people to see oh, yeah. what was happening. Yep. And they refused to open up their eyes and see it. And I did not want to be that person, you know, being that I, I do have a family, you know, especially as a man. I mean, you know this as, as, a, as a man. Yep. You're, could, could you honestly look at your family and watch them starve? Uh, no, brother. No, 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 no. Exactly. Just as a man, no. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. You can't look at the wife. There's no way. Family. No, no, no. Yes. No. And they're going to look at you and say, Daddy, you were supposed to protect us. So then yeah. as a man, and, yeah, you're, and prepare, you're not... And prepare us. And prepare yes. us. Protect and yes. prepare and provide. Yes. Yes. You know? yes. So then what happens is, is that as, a, as an Israelite, 
I would then be in a position to sin to protect my family because yeah. I'm going to have to go out there and I'm going to have to hurt somebody yeah. to feed my family. Yeah. Yeah. When clearly the Bible has given us instructions and we've seen it from our, 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 throughout our history with Joseph, with Noah, you know, it says in Proverbs twice, the prudent man foresees the evil and hides himself. The foolish man passes on and, and is punished. So we see the there precedent. Go, of, we see the precedent of prepping. We just it's like it, it hits up. And, and, and the reality is, prepping takes um, a, a, a person to be responsible with their finances. And I think that's the real yeah. reason why, especially in our culture, we don't have a lot of people that are outwardly prepping. Because you're going to have to make right. sacrifices. You're going to have to say, you know, those two hundred dollar pair of shoes, I'm not going to be able to buy those. And you know what? Because uh, you know what? You 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 touched on something that I touched on um, before before you got on the on the on the line was that it's going to force you to have to prioritize. You're touching on it right now. Um, if you're if you're going to be serious about it, if you're going to be serious and say, hey, I'm going to prep. I'm going to prepare. I'm going to uh, prepare for me and my family and, and, and provide uh, their needs in a grid down situation or a disaster situation or economic collapse situation, whatever the situation may come. Um, I need to provide, you know. Okay, so yes. instead of me going to get the brand new car, you know, yes. uh, I'm just going to keep the one I have with no car note and uh, keep it fixed up, keep it running in tip top shape. I'm just going to keep that going, and then I'm yes. going to go. Add something else to my land, or add something else to my prep and my, you know, my stockpile. You know, so absolutely, yes, it's gonna definitely take you uh, some prioritization immediately, yes. some maturity and some prioritization, brother. But I don't want to, uh, you know, interrupt your train of thought. You go ahead, cause we're still dealing with, you know, the prepared mind. And man, you're uh, you're cooking on all cylinders, brother. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, but, but you know, just like you said, uh, you know, like vehicles. You know, I see. People run after the. I drive a 1992 Plymouth Land Voyager that has almost 200,000 on it. I do 99% of the mechanic, the mechanical work on it. And then I have a 1997 Chevy Tahoe that I do about 90% of the mechanical work on it. And what that does, and I own them both outright. There's no car note. There's no me dropping two, three, four, five hundred dollars a month on a car to impress who? Who am I trying to impress? Yeah. Because exactly. when the system when the system falls down, I guarantee you those people who spent that money on those fancy cars, you know, on that elaborate weave in their hair, on those you know hundred dollar nails or those three hundred dollar tennis shoes, they're gonna wish that they had traded. They could, they're gonna wish they could trade those, that those pair of shoes for a ten pound bag of rice. Oh man! They're gonna oh, wish. My. Absolutely, absolutely. If you're starving. You give, yeah. You give up. You give up your Jordans for uh, for some rice. So, yes. Definitely. Yes. And, and that that's that idea of it, 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 it's almost like people make the excuse of I don't want anything to happen because if it does, my life will drastically change. And they assume that we want something to happen. It's like we don't want anything to happen, but in case it does. As a man, it's your responsibility to take care of your family. As a yeah. man, you you decided that you wanted to marry this woman, so then take care of her. Yep. And we don't want we don't want to accept that responsibility. What we want yep. to do is, uh, excuse me, women or women. Um, yep. It, we don't want to take we, we don't want we don't want to to be men anymore. You know, we're we're afraid of our wives. Oh well, I I don't want her to you know. It's like I, I was talking to a brother and he was going on vacation, and I asked him. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, uh, he was talking about he wants to start prepping and what she, you know, he was asking me some advice. And I said, well, you know, these, you know, start off with the basics. You don't have to go out there. And, and I'm thinking that he has a fixed income. He's like, no, well, we have a twenty thousand dollar cruise coming up. I said, twenty what? Thousand wow. dollar cruise coming up? He was like, yeah, you know, we're going here. Thousand? <laughs> I said, are you selling the, the, the world? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going? Twenty thousand wow. dollars. He was. They're going what to an doing? island. The world twice. What's that's that? what I said. <laughs> that's what I said. You know, this nice fancy trip. And I asked. Him, I said, you know, I'm cool with the vacation. I said, but you said you were getting ready. You know, you wanted to get some preps together. Why don't you take half of that, go on vacation, and the other half, 
get, get, get started. I mean, if you've got that much disposable income, you know, get started. You know, get some things together. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that when I get back. And I was like, but see, we always have that mentality of we'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. When we're supposed to be, be preparing for tomorrow. You know, it, uh, says, in, in the book of, it says in the book of Proverbs, you know, go to the ant thou sluggard. It prepares her food in the summertime. And you look at our ancient people, and our ancient people, they were big-time preppers because they worked hard in the spring, in the summer, and in the fall. So in, and they had enough food stored away because in the winter, when growing season was terrible, they could eat. Today, yeah. Yeah. you know, you look at the story of Joseph, seven years of plenty and then seven years of famine. And I fully believe that we are, in, we are at the end of the seven years of plenty. Yeah. So for those that are not prepping, you're at the point where you may be in, you know, I'm not going to give a time frame all, you know, I'm, I'm not prophesying, but you're at the time where time is running out. Time yeah. is really running yeah. out. And your lethargy and your passivity, you're going to have to pay for it, but it's not just you who has to pay for it. Your family is going to have to pay for it. Those that are looking Absolutely. up to you. You know, men say, well, I don't, want, I don't want to take that fun time away from my children. I guarantee you your children will understand the sacrifice of them not being able to go to the latest whatever, the newest amusement park, because daddy wants to put back some food. Yeah. Because daddy exactly. wants to make sure that when these times ha- happen, you know, they'd be taken care of. And that's what, that's what provoked yeah. me to prep was I have a family. I can't think like a child anymore. I, I have to be a man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. As much as, you know, I took, the, I, took, I took the responsibility, as you did, brother, of saying, you know, mm-hmm. I want you to be my wife. And yes. the children that come from it. We took that responsibility. Yes. Which means we have to stand up as men and take the responsibility of taking care of our families, not just today. You know, like uh, there's a, uh, a guy on YouTube who said, today, the average American family doesn't even have $500 in savings. Yes, and I'm looking like five hundred dollars. Like you couldn't dig yourself out of a five hundred dollar hole if you needed to. Exactly. We're not. I mean, where's the money going? You know, where you, you're. And now, obviously, the job market's a bit tough, and there's the, the, those things. But I guarantee you, that family still has money to go to Starbucks. Well, brother, you know, yeah. and you know what, it, you you know that to be true. Because you've already heard the saying a thousand times already that, you know, the average family lives from paycheck to paycheck. That means people can survive barely two weeks. Yes. Two weeks, barely. <laughs> barely can go two weeks, you know. Yes. So, that, I mean, that, 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 says a, that says a lot. I mean, come on. We've been hearing it. We've been hearing it all our adult life. Man, you know, the average family lives paycheck to paycheck, and, yeah. You cut someone's paycheck, if they don't get their next paycheck, man, people will just panic. Like, yeah. oh, wow. So I, I, I absolutely agree with what you're saying. I definitely co-sign uh, what you're saying. And everything that you're talking about <clears throat> has to do with being uh, having a prepared mind. You know, obviously yes. it starts, you know, it, you know, it just starts with the men. It starts with the men yeah. deciding to be men. And uh, yeah. what you were alluding to is that, you know, as men, and if we just, to have a wife or wife, then you're also deciding, whether you admit it or not, is assuming responsibility for their well-being, period. Yes, yes. Period. You, yes, you assume the responsibility for your sons and your daughters, that, yes. period, and your wife, wife or wife, either one. You, but you, yes. either way, you assume the responsibility, and that includes, you know, and their well-being, that includes you Prepping, you preparing for yes. worst case scenario. Because what are you trying to do yes. ultimately? You're trying to survive. You're trying to take care of your family. And you're right. When they're going through it, okay, and you're not panicking. Why? Because you have a garden. Because you're already eating. You know, you already have your provisions. You already have your sugar, rice, flour, beans. You already have yes. a cow or a goat or chickens out in the yard. You got your eggs. You already yes. have that. You have your shelter. Okay, you have alternative means for fire, you know, wood and kerosene and propane. You you have yes, a, you sir. have solar power. You got all that. Oh, and then when you're listening on the radios or if the TVs are still up and you're looking at mass hysteria, but you're out in the boonies somewhere or whatever and you're surviving, oh, your family will thank you. Yes. 
they will they will thank you because yeah. you don't have to go to the grocery store because the because the shelves are uh, empty. I said that before before you got uh, before you got on. I said, what happens yes, when you go to the grocery store and there's no food on the shelves and there's no meat in the freezer section, or no yes. there's, there's no fruit and vegetables in the produce section? What happens? What happens if uh, families <clears throat> are on uh, medications? Unfortunately, but there are yeah. people on medications. So what happens if they go to the uh, the pharmacy and you know the the, the 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 iron gate is pulled down, the doors are locked, the iron gate's pulled down, and you got people who need medication? What happens? Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, what happens? So that's what I'm saying. So I'm saying whatever your whatever you know, your mindset, whatever your motivation is, if it comes to that, um, if it comes to that point, what are you going to do? What happens if these these grocery stores and these pharmacies and so much more goes down? Mass hysteria sets in. What does the government have to do to restore order? Mm-hmm. They have no choice. At that point, mm-hmm. yep. the people who are going nuts, they have no choice but to declare martial law. Martial law. Yes. They, they don't have a choice. Because yes. what's mission number one? Restore order. That's yes. mission number one. So, yes. I, so I'm just saying, I mean, is it necessary? Yes. The other thing that I uh, had mentioned right before uh, you came on, but you did mention it, was we're not in uh, – I'm not into predicting. We're talking about preparing, okay? We're not going to yes. predict, oh, you know, um, uh, August the 13th at 5 o'clock, there's going to be a major disaster. I don't know that. I don't know that. You know, it's not my concern. You know, it's not my concern. I don't know that. And the reason I, you know, the reason why I brought that up, brother, was because, you know, and you've been there. Every, everyone is in different phases of their prepping. You know, first it might yes, be sir. just a thought like, man, you know what, I think – I think I need to start prepping. And then other people say, then other people already made up their mind and they're thinking, okay, where do I start? What do I need to do first? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so that's why I was saying, you know, it it doesn't matter where you are, what stage you're in. And that's why I'm excited to have you on the phone because you've already went through a couple of stages. You've already went through the mindset stage and then you went through the, okay, where do I start? What I'm going to do, you know? And then you got your year up to leading uh, the year, uh, up to where you are right now, you've been on your property for a little while now, um, yes. and those are some of the insights you know I want the uh, listening audience to glean and learn from, and um, uh, and so they can have some you know some key takeaways. Because some of the things that I was talking about, for instance, I said, look, even if you're in your home, because that was a stage where you were, you were, you know, at your home before you got to your land. You're at your home, yes. but you were still preparing there. Am I right? You were still preparing yes. while you yes, were there. Sir. Okay, yes, so that's that's what I'm talking about, and I was t- I mean I was talking about different things. I'm like, get yourself rice, get yourself flour, get yourself. Yes. Well, what are some of the things I said? I, I'll tell you some of the things I had pointed out. <clears throat> Just a few things. Uh, let's see here. Da 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 I talked a little bit about security. Okay, this is what I was talking about as far as food. I said, okay, get yourself some long term preps. You know, like canned vegetables, canned fruits. Uh, you know, canned meats, you know, like chicken and tuna, you know, forget the spam. We don't do that stuff, you know. Uh, yeah. get, get your, uh, <laughs> you know, get your your wheat, get your hard red winter wheat, get your rice, get your beans, you know, get yourself yeah. a Mylar bag. You're going to need that for storage, you know, because it, yeah. you know, helps keep it uh, safe and fresh. And then I said, get some of the staples, you know, I said, get your flour, salt, yeah. sugar, honey. Spices, yes. You know this stuff; it, it lasts a long time if you store property you, uh, properly. Yes. Yeast, baking flour, yes. baking powder. You know, uh, powdered milk. You know, I'm like, yeah, that's yuck. But guess what? If that's all there is, you'll take that powdered milk <laughs> if you have to. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the vin- you know, the vinegar and stuff. If you got to freeze dried fruit, food. You know, I mean, it doesn't taste very good, but hey, if you're hungry, hey, you, you, you're gonna eat it. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, I talk, I talk, you know, I talk about canning jars, pressure canning, stuff like that. I talked a little yeah. bit about security. I remember earlier you were talking about, you know, getting another AK-47 and stuff. But I was talking about, you know, a little bit of security because, I mean, you're going to spend all this time and all your uh, extra resources in getting all these preps. you got to protect it. Yes. you gotta, you got to protect it. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, what are yeah. you doing? You know, what are you doing? And I said, you got to, you know, I'm like, hey, you got to learn how to shoot. Spend some time on the range. I said, you learn how yes. to shoot. There's, people have classes all over the place. Yes. Um, 
get yourself ready. Get your get your wife or wives ready. Get them going. Let them get proficient yes. uh, with weapons and stuff like that because they can have your back. And, I mean, obviously, as men, we're not going to have them on the front line. But guess what? If I'm out front, you know, um, trying to take care of the situation, I'm out front. I don't mind having my wife in a window way back there uh, yes. looking, at some, looking at the enemy in the scope. I have no problem with that. Yes. Yeah, you know, I have yes. no problem with having my wife looking I'm at him in the scope. You know, and if I got to give it yep. a signal, hey, drop, drop him. He's hey, yeah. drop him. That's it. Yeah. Because guess what? She's willing to protect her children and protect her home. That's how it goes. Yes. Yeah, you know, that's how, that's how it goes. You know, watch my <laughs> so so you know you know so get your wife or wives ready and have them protect your back from a distance. You know, yes. get them on that rifle. You know, I I don't yes. I don't necessarily want my wife up close and personal on somebody, but I don't mind I don't mind them being a couple yards away. I don't mind that. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. So, oh yeah. I, don't, I do not mind that. So we you yeah. know I'm talking about security. You know, some food preps, talking about some security. Um, and see, you know, and of course, you know, when you're talking about your guns and things like that, go ahead and have some extra gun oil, cleaning solvents, brushes, and stuff like yes. that. Keep it in tip top shape. You know, I touched on some precious metals and things like that. Yes. Um, yes. I'll talk up. You know, I talk about some gear. I know you can. Uh, I know you can attest to. You know, having some uh, appropriate clothing. You know, yes. you some. You know, some good socks, good gloves, good boots. You know, you got yes. got to have that kind of stuff. So totally necessary yes. stuff. You know, um, tarps, sheeting, duct tape, nails. You know, yes. things like that. Man, it's just gonna come in handy. Um, did, did you did you have to get your hands on some kerosene and wood burning stove, propane? You had to get your hands on any of that yet, brother? Yes, I, um, I have. Uh, oil. I, I actually have some conversion to actually use some like oil, oil like uh, oil lamps, where I can use okay. vegetable oil. I, I can use like use vegetable oil. So we actually, I, I created some lamps where let's say you cook some chicken, you fry some chicken, mm-hmm. you can actually save that oil and use that in your oil burner. For heat mm. or for light, so it, it's a dual purpose now. So all the oil that we're storing now, I do have kerosene stored up, you know, um, lamp mm-hmm. oil. But lamp oil is expensive. You know, yeah, if you're thinking yeah. about, I'm, I'm gonna store up, you know, uh, six months worth of lamp oil, you know, to make it through four to six hours each night. That's a lot of lamp oil you have to buy. So I started to wow. look for, you know, ulterior motives, you know, because let's say it's the EMP. Well, you know, it's great you had solar until you had the EMP. Now not unless you're in a Faraday cage, you know, you're, 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 in a, you're, you're in the same situation as everybody else. So I try to have redundancy while, yeah, I have level one, but then I have level two you know, right after that in case yeah. level one fails. You know, same with mm-hmm. food, you know. Uh, uh, yeah, we opened up um, a bucket of rice from 2011, I believe it was. Still fresh, still good, still, you know, you know didn't have any weird taste or anything. And Mm-hmm. When I hear people, when I hear people talk about like, oh, it costs so much to to prep. I'm like, you don't buy your preps in one day. <laughs> you don't save yeah. up your money and then say, okay, I'm gonna drop twenty five thousand dollars on prepping because you're never gonna do it. Yeah. I told them yeah. every time you go to the store, when you leave the store, designate five or ten bucks on some rice and beans or some canned corn, you know, on some canned yeah. peas, and then. Yeah. As time goes on, what you start to realize is that you made, you know, 10 trips that month, you actually just spent, yep. you know, 50 bucks on some food and some water. Absolutely. It doesn't take much, you know, and as you get deeper into it, you know, things, you know, if you want, you know, higher quality or better, you know, stuff, you know, it's going to cost. Sure, you know, with sure, guns, I told, I, I told you with a gun, I'm like, you know, they're like, well, what should I get? You know, I don't have enough to get an AR-15. I'm like, don't go out there. Don't turn on YouTube and try to get prepping instructions from people who clearly aren't interested in prepping. If right. you don't have a gun, go get a twenty two rifle. You can get those for a hundred bucks at a pawn shop. Exactly. Exactly. Learn learn to shoot that rifle. You can you then and then when you get a bigger rifle, hand that rifle over to your wife and say, Hey, I want you you know, I want you to start shooting with this rifle. And then when she gets good at yeah. it, maybe you can buy her the you know, the two two three. But it just the, the idea of you know, and, and I just really want to hit on this real quick. When people say I can't do it. I can't do it. Or people will say, mm-hmm. I'm paranoid. You know, you're paranoid because nothing's going to happen. And I look at them like, that's what everybody says. Everybody, like you said, yeah. 1929. <laughs> everybody says nothing can happen. 
Yep. Nothing's going to happen. Everything's going to be fine. It's going to, you know, tomorrow we'll go to sleep and wake up and you'll, you'll see, you know, if people have been talking about the doomsday, you know, since, you know, forever and it's never happened. And I, that's true. People, people have been talking about it for, for years. I said, but what happened? See, what if it's not even as deep as a worldwide crisis? What if it's a local mm-hmm. crisis? What yep. if it's a Ferguson type situation or LA riots situation? Mm-hmm. Where mm-hmm. It's, it's localized in your area and you can't go to the store. Every time we hear about those hurricanes that are about to blow through in the East Coast, what do you notice? Mm-hmm. Everyone hits the stores and they clear out the shelves. Yep. Well, if you're yeah. a person who's, who's prepped, you're, fine. you're sitting at home like, I don't have to leave. I can sit right here inside yeah. of my house, and I'm perfectly comfortable because I have already prepared for this thing to happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, and it's, you know what? I, I, I experienced something. Well, I was, I was, I was thinking I, was, I experienced something very similar to uh, what you uh, mentioned, but on a much, much smaller scale. Um, okay. I used to live in a city of Corpus Christi, Texas. And okay. two times, two times, they had a, a water ban. And this is on the public water, the water that comes out of your faucet, okay? Wow. They had a water ban, meaning it was, a, yeah, they said it's like some sort of, like, contamination or something like that. And then we also had a water boil, meaning you could use it, but you had to boil it for it to be safe. And what wow. happened was when they had those two events, um, the all the – I went mm, 30 miles away to a to a grocery store to get to get some water to get cases of water and stuff like that. I mean, they were selling out all over the place, just cases of water. I don't care if it was wow. a, a gas station, uh, a gas station that had pallets of water, you know, uh, at the gas station, you know, right out front, yeah. boom, selling out left and right, selling out left and right. And that is just one resource, brother, water. Wow. <laughs> water, water. So, wow. so, so I lived, yeah. So I lived through that, and that, I mean, and it's just water, just water, and then just the, oh my goodness, it, 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 I mean, at one time we had a water ban. They said it was wasn't even safe to bathe with it. You understand? Wow. Bathe. Yeah, couple days, couple days. You Are had to you have a water serious? bottle, some soap. Yeah, water bottle, soap, and a bottle of water, a bottle of water in the tile. That's that's what you had to do. <laughs> Everybody. So anything wow. can happen, brother. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Anything could happen. Yeah. Yeah. So I I live through. I mean, I don't live there now, but I lived through two water bands and a water boil, and each time shells went bare with water. So I know. And, I and those talking. and those were your personal, you know, crap as crap as the fan events, you know. Yep. I mean, yep. literally. If you did not have that water preparation, you're yeah. in, in a bad situation. Oh yeah, absolutely. Just, yeah, it's it's got me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like you saying, and people are like, nothing will ever happen. No, it'll never happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing with like you know these same people that are critical about those who prep and don't understand it, you know, and say oh, we don't need to prep. Those are the same people that don't have a bank account for their retirement. And yep. look at them like, yeah, but. You're, you are preparing. You're preparing yep. for retirement. So yeah. <laughs> I don't understand your argument against those that do prep. You know, I'm not mm-hmm. saying you have to break your bank to do it. You know, I'm saying you can do something. Even, you know, put some yep. water away. You know, put yep. some food away. Get a firearm. And, and, and you know, like, like you mentioned, clothing. I mean, it's not expensive to get a nice pair of, of decent jeans. A, a, a nice yep. shirt, you know, don't go yep. out there and get yourself a, a fluorescent green or a fluorescent pink, you know, top, because if, if it's a bad situation, you want to be the gray man. You want to blend in. Yep. You don't, you don't exactly. want to look like the person that, 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 you know, looks like, you know, I, you know even in studying this, you know, obviously I don't want to go too deep into the more advanced stages of it. Right. But it just goes to show that it, it, it doesn't take much to play. If you have a backyard, plant a garden. Mm-hmm. Just plant a garden. If you live in an apartment yeah. and you have a b- balcony, you can container a garden. You can buy yeah. some rubber yeah. made containers, buy some potting soil, and learn to grow some food. Because I hear people, yeah. you know, who, who say, well, when, when the crap hits the fan, I'm just going to come where you are. And I'm like, no, you're not, because the people out here are very adamant about their property rights. They don't oh, like yeah. people on their property. You know, they, they don't, <laughs> you know, they'll shoot before they ask questions. 
you know, and yeah. they'll give you one warning shot, and that next shot is not a warning shot. That next shot is after you. It's like, oh, so you're not going to just... Uh, ammo is expensive. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> ammo. And if, you, if you try to buy some ammo, that stuff can get expensive. So. It does. It does. <laughs> I mean, a, a, a decent training session is going to set you back at least a hundred bucks. I'm telling you, and that's a I'm telling you that's so. a decent like just free shooting. But yeah, you know, so it's like <laughs> you're not gonna, you know, out here. I have guns up right here, and I'm gonna be honest. I two of my gardens have been miserable failures. You know, it's just it's different, and you're not gonna just come out here and throw some seeds in the ground and say, "Ooh, look, I got food." No, absolutely. I mean, absolutely. I lost half of my garden to pests. To you know. Uh, uh, Cabbage worms. I lost half of my garden to one of them. To, wow. to, to just those. And then on the other garden, the soil is very clay. There's a lot of clay here, and I didn't put enough um, organic matter on top. So it grew a little okay. bit, but then stopped growing because it, it couldn't set root. Gotcha. And it's just like, you know, people, you, you, you really have to a, a, uh, a, a sad thing when you do it and you get out of it. It's a constant lifestyle. Everything you do is in, is, in a sense, preparedness-minded. You know, if you learn yes, car mechanics, if you know how to repair your car, well, when other people's cars are going out, yours will still run. Mm-hmm. Or you may be able to repair mm-hmm. somebody else's car as a barter item, you know, a skill you just You can learn. barter, yep, Cause, yep, barter yeah. your skills, yep. Yes, cause skills, you know, people talk about, well, I don't have the money. Then learn some skills. Learn some skills. Yep. You yep. can learn those on the Internet nowadays. Yep. It doesn't cost you a dime. If you're a woman, learn to sew. Learn how to handle first aid. Learn those things. Yep. If you're a man, learn how to handle a weapon. Learn how to build a, even if it's a shack, learn how to build it. Because yep. putting a roof over your family's head and, or gr- growing a garden or learning you know, general first aid or learning simple auto mechanics or learning how to sew, these things don't cost money. Yep. They don't cost money. Yep. They, 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 you Absolutely. know, you can learn it. So, uh, you know what? Um, you're talking about those skills, and you said some things that, uh, that um, you know, you can uh, kind of first things first kind of thing, some things that you were doing before you actually got on the land. So why don't you take the audience into – because we got like a half hour left in the show. Take okay. the audience into like once you got out there, what 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 did you start to do? What what were some of the first things you done? And like as soon as you got out there, just kind of give them what it took. Because I say that you had a tremendous amount of dedication, and you were not just talking. Because you and I, you know, obviously we talk off the air. And you yes, don't just talk to talk. You know, you, you get out there, you walk the walk, you make the sacrifices, you gave up modern conveniences and stuff like that um, just to, you know, uh, took a step back just to take a step forward, you know. Um, yes, so you've done, you, you, you've been really, really doing it, really getting in there. So I want people to kind of hear your dedication in there. And one other thing, I want you to give that, that, um, that scripture one second. That scripture you said that was over in a Proverbs, and I thought, uh, I don't know, I don't know how other people receive it, brother, but it was such a blessing to me, and really snapped my priorities in place, especially dealing with uh, my land. That that one in Proverbs, I think it's twenty four and twenty seven, or it's twenty seven and twenty four. Which one was that, brother? Okay, I'm going to right now. I believe it was twenty seven, twenty four, but I'm on, I'm on east well, order my yeah. phone. Okay. Uh, Proverbs 27, 27. Oh, nope. Not 27, 24. So yeah, it may be inverted. Maybe 24, 27. Okay. 27, 24. But it was, it was an awesome, awesome proverb there. Yeah, there it is. Okay. And I'm going to read this. And I'm going to read my King James Version. Yeah, King James Version. All right. Uh, Proverbs 24 and 27. Prepare thy work without and make it fit for thyself in the field and afterwards build thine house. Wow. Wow. Yes. That one struck me hard because I was just studying, uh, you know, the book of Proverbs. And this is when I was still in California before I even left California to come to Arizona. 
And, mm-hmm. you know, usually when people get land, the first thing they do is they look for the house. Yep. They're looking for the house. Uh, they want to build this and build that. But the Bible says, prepare thy work without and make it fit for thyself in the field. So he's saying, start your fields first. Start producing food first. If you get the food going, you can live in a trailer for a couple Amen. months. You can rough it for a couple of months. I mean, nobody's ever really died from roughing it for a couple of months. You can live. You can rough it in a tent if you need to for a couple of months. Yeah. But yep. Th- but then you ha- you have food. Then after that, build your house. But we do yep. things backwards. We we get our house first, and we focus our all of our finances and our time and money on the house. And then when it comes down to the garden, we have no money for it. And brother, well, you know what's interesting about that? What's in, well, what's interesting is that if you, like you said, if you start building your gardens and everything and do that first and you can start growing food, guess what? If you can get food there, you can live there. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You can make it. That is absolute true. So what were absolutely. you doing when you first got out there, bro? When you first got out there, brother, what was going on? What, I mean, what, what did you do? What was some of the first thing you've done your first month there? Oh, boy. The first month was actually really, really hard. Um, there was, I mean, the property had no roads. It was, you know, literally a forest. There's no road. There's no area to, and I, I had a U-Haul truck, and I was pulling on a trailer. I was pulling our trailer on the back of it. And uh, so we pulled out in the front of our property. And the first night we got out here, it was a terrible storm. Uh, they had a tornado warning in the area. And uh, so we pulled out, we, we prayed to the Father, like, Father, you know, protect us. We're doing this in, in obedience to you. And we, you know, uh, got in the trailer and fell asleep. Got the U-Haul stuck in the mud the first day. I had to get it towed out of the mud. Uh, but immediately I started getting the work of just getting our, our trailer off the road. I hated it, the fact that it was on the road. So I started taking out right. trees. Take out uh, some trees, made a little path, and at that time I, I only had an axe. I didn't have, a, and I didn't have. A, well, I had a, my Harbor Freight chainsaw. But that Harbor Freight chainsaw lasted about two trees with the trees, the, the, the size of the trees that are out here, um, before <laughs> it broke. <laughs> it did. It lasted two trees. So uh, used my axe, uh, took out some trees, uh, cut them down, moved them out of the way, just enough space to get the trailer on. Now, uh, once I got the trailer on, on the property, that was our first day. Uh, immediately after that, I started looking for sunlight because, I mean, it, it, it's wooded. I mean, there's nothing but trees here. And looking up, all you see is trees. So I started to find those areas where this natural sunlight was hitting the surface of the soil. And I was like, okay, so mm-hmm. I'm going to take out the trees around those, around those areas and get my garden started. Because I knew, I, knew I, I wanted to get food in, in the ground. And I started my first two um, large garden, the ones that I failed, I started those two. But, you know... I really wanted to be obedient and, and start the food production first. And even if it was a, a situation which I failed in, I wanted y'all to see, okay, he's obeying what I've said. And I will still bless Amen. him in that. So, Amen. yes, my, gar- my gardens did fail, but um, the gardens that I've since put in after those, those are all successful. In fact, I actually have squash um, growing right now. I mean, I've got all sorts of foods growing right now. But... um. Uh, so getting the garden space situated, um, clearing, you know, we had, uh, it was still kind of raining here, but I know we have copperheads out here and, and um, uh, uh, cotton mouse out here. So, you know, I wanted to make sure that I could clear off a space so that the children had an area to come out of the trailer and be able to, you know, play and walk around in without the fear. Because, I mean, we had a layer of leaves probably three inches thick on the whole property. And, you know, I was like, okay, I know it's the, the babies are going to start hatching. So I had to, you know, I spent days, you know, literally from 8 at night, 8 in the morning to 8 at night just raking leaves, raking huge piles of leaves and getting them away so the children had a place where they could see the ground, where they could see, you know, there's nothing underneath there, um, and just making it safe generally. Absolutely. Uh, we cooked on an open fire. We had a little, we a little grill out here, and we cooked on that. We didn't have propane yet. So we cooked our meals on, we boiled water for showers and baths on our grill and then bathed that way. And then uh, boiled other water and cooked our rice, our beans, our, uh, you know, the meat that we, I went to town then to purchase, uh, cooked it that way. Um, and we had a generator, but I, the generator wasn't really in the position to be used at that moment. 
um, but fully focused on on those things. And you know, it it, it gave me a, a, a large appreciation for modern conveniences because you know when you're when you live in the kind of you know normally modern society, you turn on hot water and it's hot. Heating up water is a pain. You know, heating up water really is a pain. You know, it's it's gathering sticks yep. and filling the water in a pot yep. and then heating the water up and then putting it in a sprayer and then taking a shower that way. It's a pain. And you don't want to use just boiling water because obviously it's too hot you have to mix the water in. And it, it was a pain. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. After we, we got that part situa- situated, we know we kind of settled into, okay, what's our next goal? So I sat down uh, with Sister T and I said, you know, these are the next things I want to get, you know, get taken care of because these things seem to be more important than other things. And those were, I want to get further down on the land. I want to, you know, because we had some high winds and I talked to, I talked to Pastor Joe Fox and Pastor Joe Fox said, take out the trees that are around where you are because you don't want high winds to take out a tree, fall in a trailer and, you know, bad situation. So I started removing trees, right. taking, taking trees right. down and, and, and clearing them off the, uh, uh, where I kind of identified I wanted to move down to next. Um, that took about two weeks to clear out the trees, rake the leaves up. We started a couple more gardens while we were at it, uh, using the back to Eden style, just using the leaves instead of wood chips. And then uh, eventually put a path, and that's when Brother Jerry came down and uh, moved our trailer from where it was next to the road down to where it is now. Um, and that all happened within the first, I'd say, month. So it was just more or less getting used to it. I mean, it was rough. I mean, city people – to this lifestyle, but like we had said, right. we, we said, you know, we're going to live this thing. We're going to do it. You know, we, we, we went all in. We didn't have a fallback plan if it failed. It was, it, this has to succeed because I had nowhere else to go. Um, and I really feel that's what, you know, if the most high, if, if I believe that he was leading me this way, then why would I res- have, have a reserve pack somewhere? If he led right. me this way, I will, I will obey. Simple. It's that simple. There you go. Um, and so then uh, I started to, you know, I asked her, I said, what, what are some things that you need to make your job easier? So we got the propane running uh, so she could cook on propane instead of a oh, wooden fire. Um, I bought her a large utility sink so that she could actually wash the dishes. Right. Um, uh, built her a countertop so uh, she has a little more space. Um Bought her a mini fridge that we run on our generator a couple, you know, like an hour or two a day, um, so she could keep food food cold. Um, and then after I kind of got her, you know, situated, bought her some the things that she needed to do laundry, um, you know, clothesline and tubs, you know, and things that she could use to to, to to get the clothes clean. And then once she was situated, I said, okay, I wanted to start focusing on the building of the cabin. And she said, right. okay, you know, she's, 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 she's satisfied and happy with what she, you know, needed. Because obviously I want her to be able to take, to do and handle her job as well. And, you know, because right. one of the things that people don't understand is, is living this sort of lifestyle, yes, there's a lot on a man, but there's a lot on a woman too. There's a lot on, on, on the woman in regards to, you know, in the city, you know, taking care of the house when you have the modern amenities is, it's still, it, it, it's hard in the city. You know, if you've got children and if you're homeschooling and if you're, you know, cooking and cleaning and if you're trying to follow any sort of biblical marriage concepts or precepts, it's difficult. Absolutely. Well, out here, it's a whole different game. So um, when she was settled, you know, I asked her, I said, what is the one thing that you could really use after all that? She said, I really want to get out of this trailer. I would really like some space to be able to move. And I said, okay, because the next thing I was building was the cabin. So um, okay. that 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 has been the focus uh, now is uh, finishing up the cabin. Yeah, what, what I mean by finishing it is, you know, uh, I'm not I'm not talking about the whole thing you know, of the insulation and and you know the the you know everything perfect. I'm talking about four walls, a, a door, some windows, and as the money comes in, we can start adding on to it and fixing things up here and there. Absolutely. Uh, but as, you know, I'm not. I wanted something somewhere bigger where the children could be in, where she could be in, and be able to move, and you know, the family grows again. Um, have a place for it to grow. But yeah. um, that's been kind of where we we have been. We got our rain catchment up. That was another big 
uh, historical moment for us to actually catch the rainwater. And that yeah. people don't understand. If you're if you're coming this way, you need water. You can't yeah. buy enough yeah. water to to bathe, to shower. You can't go to the store and buy enough of it. You need yeah. water. Yeah, brother. That's gonna be a huge challenge because uh, you know I'm way out here. You know, yes. out in Arizona, so that's that's gonna that's gonna be a challenge for me. That that whole water thing. But you know, I'm gonna try to. You know, with the blessings of Yah, I'm going to try to meet that challenge. Uh, obviously, the ultimate goal is, you know, to dig a well, but, you know, you got to yes. get it at a reasonable price. So, <laughs> yes, there, we, there we are, had there that are, there, I know there's other methods. <laughs> I know there's other methods for now, rain catchment and whatnot, you know, retaining pond, rain catchment, so yes. on and so forth. Yes. Also, in that area, you know, I know it's on there, but uh, out in that area, they actually have uh, water stations where they mm-hmm. will actually fill up a tanker and bring it to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, water hauling, hauling, hauling. Yes, water hauling, yes. They have that out there. Yeah. I wish they had it out here, but they have it out there. <laughs> yeah. I definitely yeah, will be a, doing it, that. <laughs> it's, just, it's a beautiful thing, you know, and you learn a lot about yourself and living this lifestyle also, you know, you – you think you know yourself, you think you know your family. Your, our, our family has gotten so much closer together because we're all working together for a common right. goal. You know, even right. as, you know, the, the, the children, when I'm, you know, playing in the garden, you know, they'll come by, or when I get the garden, they'll come by and say, Daddy, you know, can we plant the garden? I'm like, beautiful, because, you know, let's say they're on a lesson on homeschooling and they want to know where does food come from. Well, then I just give them the, 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 the package of seeds. I'm like, all right, go ahead and plant them. And then, you know, then I get to use math. And I'll tell them, okay, I want you to plant four rows and three seeds in each row. And know how many seeds is that going to be? And they'll, okay, 12. Right. I'm like, yeah, see? So you're teaching them that they're, they're, they're getting the homeschooling at the same time, but getting their hands to the ground. And, yeah. uh, like, for, for them, they love it out here. You know, they get to come outside every day. There's no gunshots. <laughs> There's no weed <laughs> smoke. <laughs> It's just yep. they get to come outside and, you know, enjoy what Yah's created, you know, nature. You know, they've seen frogs, they've seen snakes, they've seen birds, you know, they've seen deer. We have a lot of deer out here. Raccoons, skunks, I mean, there's everything out here. It's, and they get to experience it that they've never got the opportunity to experience before. Yes, sir. You know, Sister T, her eyes are just wide open every day because she's seen things that she's never seen before. No, that no, that's that 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 you hit it right on the head, man. I love that. Um, the homeschooling, um, man. You know, that, we got to do that. I, I love to do more uh, of that. You know, believe it or not, I yeah. got a, a, a young one, a young one about to go into high school actually. So. Oh wow. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, but next year, well, next year, you know, next school year, gonna yeah. go into that. Yeah. So. I'm like, ah, oh, my goodness, my goodness. So we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's a story for another time. That's just some scary stuff. When you have kids, man, that's just, oh, that's just scary, scary. So no, I, you, brother, you have, man, you are just enriching, uh, you know, the listeners, especially the ones you know are just kind of starting off, and just trying to figure out what they can, what they can do, or what they should do, and um. I think it's I think it's very encouraging, you know. I think you gave yes, me more than enough reasons, you know, to do it because you already know that the reward, you know, towards the end, and not that there's a complete destination. I mean, we'll be like I said, it's a lifestyle, so you're gonna be doing it until we die. But yes. the reward, <laughs> excuse me, is gonna be um, uh, so so worth it, so worth the sacrifice that you've already put in, you know. Let alone, you know, the sacrifice you're gonna be uh, putting in going forward, but. Um, but yeah. you know what? We both we both have a vision. You know, we know yeah, why sure. we're doing it. And we know where we want to take it. You know, before Yah, you know, takes our takes our breath. You know, I mean, we know yeah, we know sure. tomorrow's not promised to us, but you know, we know where we want to take it. Yes, sir. So I definitely want the uh, you know the audience to kind of glean from that and say, hey, you know what? It is going to take. You know, sacrifice. So what I want to do, uh, brother, and I, first, first and foremost, I appreciate you uh, being able to get on the phone and really kind of hammer home, you know, some prepping one on one. I think I think we definitely covered some of that. 
uh, a, a prepper's mindset, you know, just having a prepared mind. I definitely think we covered that. And then, the, like you said, the getting started, the first, you know, the first year in prepping, the getting started, the stuff like that. I think some of the key takeaways is when you had said, look, you're not buying all your preps at one time, okay? You're not going to buy it yeah. at one time. But when you go, you know, you buy a bag of rice, guess what? Buy an extra bag. One to get yeah. now, one one to, one to put to the side. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, and like you yeah. said, after about ten trips, look how much prep you have, and all you did was do the same stuff that you've been doing. You just got a little extra uh, to go for your prep. So I think that was yeah. uh, a beautiful tip there. You know, that was definitely a beautiful, uh, awesome tip. Because you're right, everyone kind of feel they they make it overwhelming for themselves. Yeah, you know, they yeah. make it like way too big a deal. It's like okay, bye. Uh, two big heavy duty flashlights and some batteries. I mean, so, so, and I, and that's just off the top of my head. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Just, you can you yes. can do it. Just <laughs> anything, you know. Just just anything. Yes. Buy anything. Get do something just to get your feet moving in the right direction. You know, yes. don't get overwhelmed with it. Uh, like you said, trying to do it at once. Oh, you know what? When I save up twenty thousand dollars, then I'm gonna buy all my preps. No, it yes. doesn't work like. That. Yeah, you know, it doesn't yeah. work like that, you know. It's piece by piece, step by step. So you definitely has enriched the people there, and you certainly blessed me with that, um, you know, with that scripture because I told you that really changed my mindset. Because the first thing I was thinking about, uh, I'm gonna be honest with you, the first thing I was thinking about was shelter. That's the first yeah. thing I was thinking about, and then yeah. you hit me with that scripture, and then I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute! I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna go against b- biblical wisdom. You know, I mean, yes. you know, the Most High, the Most High said that for a reason. You know, He put yes. that in there for a reason. I'm not gonna go against that. So it it completely changed what I was gonna do. It com- completely changed my priority list. I say, you know what? Now when I go out to my uh, land, <clears throat> I'm working on gardens. You see, yes. I'm working on chicken coops, gardens, beans, everything that is without, as the Bible would say. Yes. Everything that's yes. outside, I'm going to be working on those things. And you know what? That yes. works because since I'm not on my property 24-7, I can do those type of things and not to – and, I, you know, I won't have to too much worry about uh, people taking anything if it's just um, a couple of pieces of wood that's marking off my uh, garden. Not that big a deal. Yes. You, say, yeah. you know, so that 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 was beautiful, you know, because once you really start putting stuff in there, solar panels and all kinds of things that really cost some serious money or whatever, then you need to be there to protect. Yes. Yeah. You know, you got you got to be there. And since That's I'm not the there yeah. right now, of course, you know, I'm I mean, I'm working on it. Um, but since I'm not there right now, I don't want to put those type of things in there if I can't watch it. You know, if I can't guard yes. it and protect it. So. So that 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 scripture really blessed me, and I saw one of your uh, videos on the following Yeshua uh, YouTube channel. So if you guys don't know that, definitely comment, rate, subscribe to following Yeshua on YouTube. And um, uh, you you were uh, giving you were giving uh, well, you were just talking, you know, on one of your videos, and you had brought out yeah. that uh, scripture, and it, was, and it was nonchalant, and I was like, whoa, wait a minute, I have to pause the video. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, look. Slow down, brother. Hold on, hold on. You drop a nugget. Don't just drop it in my lap and walk away. Hold on. <laughs> you just going to give me some drive-by scripture. What, what, what are you doing? Uh, hold on. Wait a minute. Pump the brake. This is for the <laughs> I had to, man, I paused the video. I had to go grab my Bible. I said, what the heck? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me read this. Let me. <laughs> I said, uh-uh. I said, oh, okay, you're just going to drop some jewels like that and just all walk away. All right. Okay. Well, you bless you bless me. You bless me. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll take that. I'll, I'll, hey, I'm well, not, praise you. Yeah. Ain't you proud to Praise you. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I did not I did not know that. I didn't, I, you know, I just looked. So, anyway, it really did just change the way I was looking at it. I said, you know what, let me just, let me, you know, let, let me reprioritize. And it blessed me. It really, it really helped me in my situation since I, you know, since I can't be on the land right now, but I can visit it and stuff. But, yeah, it's definitely going to have me do things a little bit different. You know, um, you were talking about skill set. You know, um, yeah. I'm not I'm not a carpenter. You know, I'm not a carpenter. Yeah. But guess what? Yeah. I will grab a hammer, some nails, give me a drill, whatever, yeah, and, I can, and I can take instruction, uh, which is yeah. one of the other things I'm going to do. I'm going to visit uh, – uh, PJF uh, 
pretty soon here. Um, I got to make plans to go and visit him so that I can be mentored in that type of thing. Because, like you said, you know, his skills are going to be pretty valuable. You know, yeah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't work on, I didn't, you, you, you know how to work on cars. I haven't worked. The only thing in cars that I worked, I'll be honest, I worked on brakes. Okay, I can okay. work yeah. on brakes, but I tell you know, but I haven't worked everywhere on cars. I just worked on the brakes. Yeah, you know, when I worked at a, uh, it was just a brake shop. It was a brake shop. They didn't yeah. do everything on cars. You know, they just did yeah. brakes and alignment. That's all they did. You know, yeah. so yeah. Um, you know, so I I can do that. You know, change some, turn some rotors and drums, and you know, and switch out <laughs> some shoes and stuff. You know, I can bleed your brake system stuff like that. I hadn't done it in a while, yeah. but I did it. You know, <laughs> but yeah. I did it. You know, so I, I, that kind of stuff. But yeah, definitely want to get my skills up. Uh, with that, and I'm just sharing, and I'm just saying that um, because I, I I want to kind of give uh, the listeners an idea of uh, people being in different places in their in their prep. Yeah. You see, yeah. I didn't want them, you know, hey, I'm, you know, I call, you know, call myself, you know, is like prepper, call my show is like prepper and stuff like that. But that's not because oh, I got 30 years in prepping. And I know, no, 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 no. I, yeah. I go to mentors. I go to peers. You know, um, I talk to you. You and I, we met. You two, we got on the phone. There's some kindred yeah. spirits. We're serving, we're, you know, we're serving the same yah. And I said, okay, this brother is doing well, I talk about it. You talk about it. You're a couple steps ahead of me, which I'm not ashamed to uh, admit. And I said, you know what? I can learn a couple things from this brother. This brother, mm-hmm. he's doing it. He's not just talking it. He's doing it, you know? Yeah. And so I said, yeah, I said, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I definitely want to lock arms, you know, with a brother uh, like that. So definitely get your Hallelujah. skills up, get mentor, you know, get mentored by some. And then you and you've been a big proponent of uh, uh, being mentored, you know, being a mentor yes. and and being mentored by someone who's done it before you. You want to talk about that yes. a little bit? Yes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, uh, I, I, same place you're going, Pastor Fox. Um, mm-hmm. I, w- I went there and was able to, you know, uh, put my hand on, on the plow on the land. And, mm-hmm. you know, he, he's, ex- you know, I'll, I'll say he's experienced. You know, now he may humbly say not he's not, but I say he is, you know. And yep. I, I, the ideas that I've gotten from him and watching how he built, watching what he did, watching how uh, the systems that he has created. And, I, and, I, and uh, there's another brother who is uh, his, his YouTube channel, um, mm-hmm. Off Grid Victory. He's also mm-hmm. uh, um, within, you know, the Ozark area, you know. Okay. Oh, okay. He's, and he's, he's off grid, and he has his own way he's doing things. So it's like as I, as I and I've been able to, to fellowship with him and <clears throat> into his property, so what mm-hmm. happened is I as I as I watch these, these these brothers who, you know, they're serving Yah, they keep the commandments, they're yep. doing this, you know, they decided to come out of her my people, and they're all do, they're all they all have their own little spin to it. That nobody's saying my way's the right way, you gotta do it this way. If you do it the other way, it's saying it's wicked. They're not saying that. It's a, hey, we're doing sure. it this way. Sure. We're doing it this way. You know, I there's there's ways that I'm doing it that I guarantee you is not the best way to be done. It's not the best way to be done. Right. There are those, you know, I, so I look at those that have, you know, uh, the, the Pastor Fox and, and his other brother, uh, Off Grid Victory, and they are doing it with, it seems, minimal effort. It almost seems like they were meant to do this thing. <laughs> wow. Like, wow. Their, ex- their experience, their, their knowledge, you know, and, and, and their humility. They'll even admit the mistakes yeah. that they've made and how they would do it better. So it's not like a, well, I made this mistake, but I'm not going to tell you why I made the mistake so you can make it too. No, they'll tell you, this is what we did. If we could do it different, I, we would have done this instead. And it's just like, wow. So they're, they're really interested in you learning from their mistakes. And you being that, successful. That's a true teacher. Yeah, that's a true mentor, a true yes. teacher. Yep. Yes, yes. And I've experienced that, you know, in, in both their places. Um, them sharing the information and giving me the information and then telling me, <clears throat> but don't do it that way. Do it this way instead. You know, this, this way would probably work yeah. better for your situation. And it's just like, wow, you know, they really have a love and want to see you succeed in it because in reality there's not many people who are of the faith who are choosing to walk this way. Yeah, because it, it, it's it's really dying to your flesh. You have to die to your flesh. But Yeshua has already told us to do that. Yah has already told us to die to our flesh. Absolutely. But it's that Absolutely. it's that really dying, you know, brother. It's like 
you know, all the things that you are so used to, you know, television and this and that, it's not there. And I'm not saying that everybody yeah. has to come this way to, you know, to you know, be a prepper or, or live, you know, off grid right. or whatever, right. you know, because if I had it my way, if I could, you know, if I had the money to do it, I mean, sure, it'd be nice to have electricity 24 hours a day. Oh, sure. It'd be nice. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it'd be nice to flush your toilet. <laughs> but the reality yeah. of it yeah. is, <laughs> is <laughs> these men really it's like they they want the first ones to do it but in my mind they're pioneers because mm-hmm. one you can you, you, you can find them on youtube and they they chronicled their their journey so that you yeah, can exactly. participate with the journey with them and understand and see it and watch them as their house was nothing and now it's something and watch their garden you know uh, come from nothing to something and it's very powerful and it's empowering because it's like, wait a minute, if this man, you know, and, and I'll do respect to Pastor Fox, but yeah. if this man is almost, is, 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 you know, 20 years my elder and he's right. doing it, what am I doing sitting here? Yeah, what am I it, doing it does, sitting here? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I, I really had I, I really had that feeling when I went to his property and I saw everything they had accomplished. And I'm like, Wow. And they're maintaining it and they're adding on to it and building on to it. I'm like, This man is somebody that I need to glean to because I mean clearly he's a man of much discipline. He's a yep. man he's obviously a pastor, so he's a leader uh of of, of people. Yep. And those are the people that we should cleave on to. And, Absolutely, and, brother. Absolutely. And, and honor honor them for their knowledge and their understanding of, of of this life. You know what I mean? I just it's it's I, I can't give them enough credit and I know that, that both of them don't want the credit, you know, though you know, you don't have to put it out there like that. I, but it's just it's an honor to me for me to be able to call them pastor, brother, friend. And right. know that they have your well-being in mind. They yes, have sir. your well-being, and and I mean, and you'll see, brother, when you hit when you when you get to the the property, you're gonna look at them like, are you kidding me? Because mm-hmm. the intuitiveness and the inventiveness and the creativity that they use, I'm like, where have I been? Is what, what what have I been putting in my brain all these years? Absolutely, it, it, it's like it, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know what? You're you're absolutely right. It get, because you know what? It gives you the feeling that you 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 have all this garbage information, useless information, yeah. and then they they're bringing you something that could uh, help sustain you and your family. <laughs> you're like, man, I wasted so much time. <laughs> For yes, useless yes. information, I, I got all these yes. sports statistics in my head. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness, I, you know, and I and, I, and I'm not picking on anybody because I mean I'm a football fan, and uh, you know, yes. I'm like, okay, yeah, I mean, you know, I know how many you know Super Bowl rings this guy has and all that crap. I'm like, yes. oh, that is that's not gonna feed my family. It's just not, you know. <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh! This is oh, this yes. is deeply, deeply, deeply edifying. We got about three minutes left <clears throat> on the air. Three minutes left on the air. So what I'm gonna do <clears throat> is, if I want you to go ahead and give some parting last words, and then I'll close out in the last three minutes. Just kind of, you know, just some words of encouragement, just some tips. You know, hey, if you're gonna do it, do it. You know, things like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and let you have the floor for about two minutes, and then I'll just close it out for you, brother. Go ahead. Well, I'll just say this, really quite simple. <clears throat> if you're going to do it, set your mind to it and do it. Don't, mm-hmm. you know, go half-ass. If you're going to set your mind to this thing to do it, do it. Do it wisely. Do it with counsel. Do it with instruction. But be about it. And the last thing I want to say is you can actually do it. You can actually do it, whether it be prepping whether it be uh, moving off grid, whether it be homesteading uh, on the grid, whether it be growing a garden, whether it be working on a car, you can do it. You can walk this space out. You can be an asset to Israel, an asset to your brothers and your sisters. You can do it. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God, praise God. And um, I hope everyone 
has been absolutely, you know, edified and got something out of it, you know, got some tips out there, got some, some first steps out there, um, has an idea that they, you know, they want to um, get the right mindset into it and, and get the purpose, the purpose and the reason why you would move forward um, in prepping if that's exactly what you want to do, okay? But you can start from where you are, like the brother said. If you want to do it, you you can do it. It can be done. I mean, it can start as simple growing herbs in your windowsill or something, you know, just grow something, get that experience of looking at the process. That will kind of help you with this uh Instant gratification, it, it'll break you out of that instant gratification, have to, um, you know, grow something to let nature take its course and see, you know, what works, what doesn't work, and things like that. So I think that's uh, hugely valuable, and you'll be an asset to you and your family, and you can be an asset to Israel. So this has been the Prepared Mind Prepping 101 and the first year. I appreciate you, brother, for, uh, you know, sharing your journey. With all of us, always good to have you on, and you're definitely coming back. We'll get with everybody. <laughs>